traps. Whether it's getting a dart to the face, the tenth time getting crushed by a boulder, or getting blown to smithereens by that one explosive you didn't see, traps are a nightmare. And Master Mode is a brutally difficult difficulty that makes even the simplest of tasks a challenge. But since two negatives make a positive, beating Master Mode using only traps should be a cakewalk. I enter the world, toss my sword into the trash, and get exploring. I find an aglet, mine some iron, and am killed by a vulture. I'm only 7 minutes in and I already died. Surely that won't represent how the rest of the challenge goes, right? I build a few NPC houses, and when night arrives, dive underground. I explore for a while where I grab my first trap, which is completely useless until I beat Skeletron, as well as find a few life crystals, an armored band of regen, warding water walking shoes, and finally, a pair of Hermes boots. Time begins to fall from the sky, so I quickly return home, craft a heavy workbench, and with it, make 34 boulders. Finally in possession of a weapon I can actually use, I start slaying slimes. And the traveling merchant, but let's not talk about that. I keep the boulders rolling until the king slime spawns and immediately kills me. The gelatinous rain stops, allowing me to finish off my set of gold armor, meaning I have everything I need to take on the first boss of the challenge, Skeletron, who I want to fight first because until he is defeated and I find the mechanic, I am limited to using only boulders, bouncy boulders, rolling cacti, and TNT barrels. While lava and beehives are technically traps I could use as well, I've decided to ban both of them because lava is way too boring, and beehives are literally so overpowered they aren't allowed to be used in Terraria speedruns. That and I kinda just forgot about them. I craft a whopping 204 boulders with all my stone and get to building the Skeletron trap. It's a massive pain with my pre-boss armor and tools, especially since the dungeon is plopped right next to the corruption. I get the general area already ready, but before I commit to building a complete trap, I summon Skeletron to see where he likes to hover and how he moves around. I don't even last 10 seconds before I'm killed, so I learned jack crap. I decide to just send on an idea and start building. A pinky spawns so I temporarily stop everything I'm doing and using a couple of boulders, manage to kill it and secure myself one of the most important items for pre-hard mode, pink gel, which I can use to craft bouncy boulders, the rumbunctious younger cousin to the regular boulder. But for now, I finish the first draft of my skeleton trap, which is an underwhelmingly sized box with an underwhelming amount of boulders in it. With it complete, I give it a test drive, and just like before, learn nothing and die. Which now that I think about it is probably what's going to keep happening with my gold armor, tiny arena, and 180 health. I can't really do anything about my armor, but for the other two, I expand the arena a bit and grab a few more life crystals. This doesn't have anything to do with Skeletron, but I do also build a box in the sky near my base for dealing with the inevitable goblin army attack. I craft a bunch more boulders and wait to summon the Skeletron. Unfortunately, my plans for the evening are cut short when I feel an evil presence watching me. The Eye of Cthulhu awakens, but my Skeletron trap is not working against it. A star hits the eye, pushing it into its second form, to which I am soon killed. So far, all I've been able to do in this challenge is lose to three of the easiest bosses in the game. How fun for me! Skeletron V3 goes almost the exact same as the others, so I decide to change targets. My biggest problem right now is survival. My gold armor just isn't cutting it, so I head into the corruption and start blowing up an Eater of Worlds arena. Beating the Eater would allow me to make molten armor, which would drastically increase my defense. I build a little safety box I can drop boulders from and break a third shadow orb, awakening the Eater of Worlds. The boulders actually do pretty good damage, but I guess I built my safety box a little high so the Eater just despawns. I lower my box, add a pillar in the pit for extra surface area, and summon it again. This time, I I'm too low, so I despawn. I once again adjust a few things and manage to kill myself with my own boulder, marking the first of many self-inflicted deaths via boulders. I finally finish my adjustments and once again summon the Eater of Worlds. I try to make it up to my safety chamber, but get hit down to a single health in the process. I somehow survive getting to safety and it looks like the height is just right. I start absolutely shredding breaking the eater into smaller pieces that do manage to almost kill me, but being the clutch master I am, I narrowly avoid death, leaving just one more section to take out. It's a bit of a struggle to actually hit, but in no time, the eater of worlds is defeated using nothing but boulders. I craft a nightmare pickaxe, actually make that two nightmare pickaxes, and the goblins begin their invasion. Thankfully, my base defenses work way better than I could have hoped for, making all but the goblin sorcerers completely harmless. And once I make it so they can't teleport on top of the trap, even the sorcerers don't pose any threat. 
So the goblins are defeated. I locate the goblin tinker underground, buy a pair of rocket boots and a tinkerer's workbench, search the jungle for an anklet of the wind, and put it all together into a fresh new set of lightning boots. I then mine out a elevator, collect some obsidian, and put on a rather studious new outfit. Looking good. Oh yeah, and far less importantly, I do also start mining hellstone. I try to stay near the bottom of the world so enemies can't spawn above, and I quickly get enough to craft a full set of molten armor. Fired up and ready to go once again, I get back to the Skeletron problem. I increase the size of my arena and quadruple stack boulders until for like the hundredth time I run out. That's when I remember a trick I saw on the wiki a while ago for getting mass amounts of stone. I make a few houses in the jungle, assign one of them to the merchant, and buy over 600 furnaces. Okay, that was way more than I wanted. Let's just go with 200. I go on a quick shimmer hunting expedition, and once I find it, turn all 200 furnaces into 4,220 stone, plus a bit of wood and some torches. This this strategy ends up saving me hours upon hours of stone gathering as I end up using tens of thousands of the stuff throughout the playthrough. For now though, the eye decides to once again interrupt me while waiting to summon Skeletron, and having already drank in a few potions, I give it another go. The eye of Cthulhu awakens, and the fight is actually going pretty well. The boulders do good damage, and the servants form a makeshift invincibility chamber around me, keeping me safe from the eye's more powerful attacks. It goes in Senyo style, but doesn't send even the remotest chance against my molten armor and the Eye of Cthulhu is defeated. I now have to wait a full day to fight Skeletron again, so I start messing around with a trap I've never actually used before, the TNT barrel. It doesn't take long before I have an idea that might just work on Skeletron. By placing the barrel on top of sand, I can remote detonate it from a safe distance. Feeling like a super genius, I add a dozen barrels stacked on sand to the Skeletron trap, and after only one mishap, curse the old man. I get Skeletron into the right position, and... Well, that was an explosive failure. I press on and do do a little bit of damage, but hardly ever to his head. So I give up and am killed. While the explosive idea clearly didn't work very well, I still feel like they have potential, and after a bit of testing, I build a long hallway where I'll be able to activate individual explosives rather than detonating them all at once. I get knocked around by the hands a lot in such a small area, but with just a few explosives, he's already down to 10,000 health. All my barrels exploded, I let Skeletron do me in and start building a much larger version of the prototype. I add a total of 40 barrels and summon him again. I use nearly all of my TNT, but he still has over 8,000 health left. Screw you, explosive barrels, I really thought you might actually be useful. I try to salvage the fight by using the glorious bouncy boulders, but it turns out that my previous statement, the most important items for pre-hard mode, pink gel, could not have been further off. I once again just resort to placing boulders randomly within the trap, hoping they'll hit. Which actually gives me an idea. I teleport home, craft a few hundred more boulders, tear down the sand trap, and start a boulder rolling on the far end of the tunnel. We race down the hallway, and I turn out to run just a tiny bit faster than it can roll. Brilliant. I stack up a few more boulders, even boulder? What the heck is that even supposed to mean? I wrote this joke and I can't even figure it out. The stack spreads out nicely, and ready for a beta test, I summon Skeletron. In just a single arena length, both hands are nearly destroyed, and the head takes a bit of damage as well. I head to the box and do the random boulder thing. Unfortunately, I accidentally destroy one of the hands with the shields of Cthulhu, disqualifying this attempt. But I continue anyways for knowledge's sake. I place a boulder in my hallway, hit it, and get to running. My timing wasn't very good, yet it still does a decent chunk of damage. I do a bit of workshopping on the fly, but eventually get caught and am killed by my own boulder. Now knowing the strategy, I build four massive stacks of boulders for taking out Skeletron's hands, mark the ends of the hallway so I know where to place boulders in order to get them to roll the right way, and awaken Skeletron once more. I easily destroy both of his hands with the towers, and do serious damage to Skeletron himself while he's spinning. If you if you have a hard time with this fight, this is genuinely a good strategy for taking him out, because in only a few minutes, the mighty Skeletron is defeated once and for all unlocking the dungeon, which I immediately enter. I know this is a common theme throughout my videos, but the dungeon is by far the worst place for me to be. When your only means of defense relies on a flat surface and has a 50% chance of rolling the wrong way and killing you, a bumpy, overpopulated, and already deadly set of halls and chambers makes fighting back utterly useless, which really sucks in master mode. Incredibly, I somehow cling on to life long enough to find the mechanic and buy a wrench, wire cutters, a quarter second timer, and some wire. I teleport home, and is this the 1760s to 1840s? Because we just hit an industrial revolution.
The ability to use wire traps now mine, the entire challenge opens up. I make a graveyard, shimmer another 240 furnaces, and craft 81 boulder statues. The best weapon available until the golem is defeated. My new trap in hand, I upgrade the base defenses to be automatic using timers, and for the first time this playthrough, activate a wire-driven trap. Eager to test my new weapons, I start preparing to face the king slime, where I learn one of the most important tricks for beating this challenge. While you can't place boulder statues, BS is for short, on platform, platforms, you can place them on regular blocks, then just block swap the layered platforms. Unlocking the ability to stack statues, which seriously increases the amount of damage I'll be able to deal in a small area. I use the block swapping to increase how frequently boulders can drop, mine out a little hallway underground, and summon the king slime. The entire fight is as simple as moving over a bit anytime the king begins to teleport, while my boulders do the rest. A few regular slimes do spawn in my tunnel, but I vastly outtank them, and the king slime is defeated. Dealing with knockback during that fight made me realize that the cobalt shield is a must, so back into the dungeon I go. I attempt to set up a mini farm for getting golden keys, but completely forgot to record the horrors of trying to build it. I basically just died a lot and occasionally managed to place a few blocks. I finish it, chill in my trap for a few minutes, and grab the spoils, including a few keys. I unlock a chest, see the shield for half a second, die, make my way back, grab it, and never enter the dungeon again. Back at base camp, I brew up a bunch of danger sense potions and begin the great trap hunt which only ends up lasting like 15 minutes because I get bored almost immediately. But hey, 10 geysers ain't bad. And speaking of geysers, it's time to take on the Queen Bee. I mine out an area in the underground jungle, lining the top with BSs, then wire it all together using four separate timers to spread out when the boulders drop. Once that's done, I make a place for me to be safe from my trap and summon the Queen of Insects. Almost immediately, it's clear that my hallway is far too short as all of her attacks are fully unavoidable. I also immediately know that my hallway is far too tall as she doesn't get hit at all when dashing. With no way of dodging, I decided to just plant myself in one spot, hoping to somehow tank the damage from the now hundreds of bees that have swarmed around me. Yet with mere seconds till I can heal, I am defeated. I lower the roof, add heart statues and geysers, then once again summon the Queen Bee. She does a lot of damage at first, until a bee makes its way into the hall and just like with the eye, creates a super janky and accidental invincibility chamber by providing me with near constant immunity frames. I would normally call this cheating, but there is literally nothing I could do to stop it from happening. And in no time at all, I've won the battle and the Queen Bee is defeated. Next up is the Deerclops, so I built a half-baked and untested trap to take her out. I wait in a blizzard and at midnight, she awakens. I did not think this trap through, and it is very apparent as she doesn't even go into it. I try to coax her in, but take tons of damage to my own traps and die. Luckily, the Deerclops doesn't despawn, so I can try and make it work another four or five times. It obviously doesn't, so I make my platform into actual platforms and find finally get into a sustainable pattern. This entire fight was a complete disaster, but after 16 minutes of battle, the Deerclops is defeated. So onto the Wall of Flesh. I make my way down to what will inevitably be my eternal home and start working on a hell bridge of sorts. The enemies are more annoying than anything, making me stop what I'm doing every few seconds to dodge an attack from a monster not worth taking the time to kill. It's very mind-numbing work, but I do take the time to kill voodoo demons when they spawn, so by the time I get to start on the actual trap, I have plenty of dolls. My strategy for taking on the wall is simple, quantity over quality. That being the case, I built four rows of 25 BSs and wire them to drop one section at a time. From there, I control C, control V, my hellbridge a few times to keep the boulders spread out, completing the wall of flesh trap. Before I fight the wall, however, I throw together a super basic and only half-functioning spider trap for getting spider fangs to craft venom traps. I also make myself a pair of Terra Spark boots. But with that, let the battle begin. The damage is really good compared to what I'm normally working with. Yes, I am looking at you too, but it's not nearly as high as I would have hoped. Thankfully, my tunnel blocks most of the wall's lasers, so the only real issues are the leeches and the size of my hellbridge, both of which come together to kill me. I expand the bridge a little, but once again struck with laziness, only a little, resulting in my second attempt going nearly identical to the first. I really don't feel like making my hallway longer, so I instead just rewire the entire trap to drop in layers versus in sections like before, hoping my revisions deal a more constant spread of damage, I, unbeknownst to the man himself, and with no regret for me whatsoever, once again sacrifice the guide to the spirits. The damage is infinitely better, proving that I am in fact a genius. My hallway keeps me safe from lasers, a lot of the leeches get taken out by boulders, and the mighty wall of flesh is defeated releasing upon the world the spirits of light and dark and ramping up the difficulty tenfold. So sit back, relax, hit the subscribe button, and get ready for hard mode. Because lord knows, I was not.
Officially in hard mode, I grab my loot, consume the demon's heart, and get to killing spiders. It's excruciatingly slow with the recluse's thousand health, so I just get enough fangs to craft four venom traps. Another weapon I've never actually used before, and holy crap do they hurt. Using them, and of course boulders, I once again upgrade the base defenses, this time to be able to take on solar eclipses, the new goblin army, and the pirates. I even add an upper trap for killing flying dutchmen. Now better prepared for the inevitable, I smash a bunch of altars and get to mining, making my way from cobalt, to mithril, and finally, to adamantite. Out of which, I craft a full set of armor, so it's time to take on the first hard mode boss, the dreaded wyvern. I get one to spawn and bring it down to the base defenses where it brutally murders me having your received almost no damage. Same with the next. I build a long platform, add a stack of boulders, then accidentally kill myself with them. The actual wyvern is what does me in the next two attempts, but explosive barrels are my downfall the next. I try using the skeleton method, but thanks to wyverns literally having more health than him, my efforts are fruitless. Meaning, it's mecha killing a clock. I shimmer a thousand more furnaces, craft 280 statues, and start working on the biggest and most advanced trap yet. After all, it does need to be suitable for three separate bosses. And what's my solution for taking on this multi-boss problem, you ask? Introducing the boulders method. Boulders, 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 boulders. Like hundreds of them. Enough to turn the entire screen into a mess of high velocity rolling projectiles. I wire up my heart statues, catch a golden ladybug, and this is gonna be a terrible night. Right away I notice that with the boulders dropping in layers, it's pretty easy for the twins to go unhit for several seconds in a row. I also notice that fighting them while trapped in a three block tall hallway really sucks. Needless to say, the fight did not end well. Wanting to be able to spawn in the mechs on my own timetable, I get to mining an underground hollow farm. It goes beyond bad. I really should have done this in pre-hard mode because being a device meant to spawn mass amounts of monsters means mass amounts of monsters are gonna spawn, turning what would normally be a half hour of casually mining into an hour and a half process of repeatedly dying and occasionally breaking a few blocks. Not to mention that the goblins invade partway through so I have to completely stop what I'm doing to deal with them. Amazingly, they're even more of a pain to deal with. The warlocks and sorcerers attacks all go through walls, so I'm in constant danger. I die more than my fair share of times, and the goblin army is defeated. I agonizingly finish mining out and wiring together the hollow farm before changing it into a corruption farm, as my first target is the destroyer, and its summon item calls for souls of night. I gather enough for now, craft a mechanical worm, and confident that this'll be easy, summon the destroyer of worlds. The damage is just genuinely insane, but I die in seconds. Man, I really thought the destroyer was gonna be a one-shot boss. My mech trap really didn't cut it survivability-wise, so I return to the Skeletron Arena, which I make longer, thicker, and add a few balls to. I summon the destroyer again, and am killed in less than five seconds. I still feel like this plan could work, however, so I run it back. It spawns from the wrong direction and doesn't follow the platform like I'd hoped it would. It spawns the right way this time, but just doesn't stay parallel with the hallway. This one-attempt boss is turning out to be a long lot more work than I expected. I decide to give the boulder fields another shot and actually PB, getting the destroyer to a measly 50,000 health remaining. Attempt 7 and 8 both end in disaster, finally waking me up to the fact that something needs to change. To start, I tear down all the current wiring, expand the arena both horizontally and vertically, add hundreds more BSs, and wire it all back together the way I should have in the first place, making sure two sides of the same level never drop at the same time. All my adjustments complete, the trap is a true sight to behold, and with hours of prep behind me, I summon the destroyer. In only 12 seconds, the boss with the second highest amount of health in the entire game is defeated using nothing but boulders, averaging out to a ludicrous 12,750 damage per second. Who needs the zenith when you can just use, and I kid you not, over a thousand boulder statues? Unfortunately, the rest of the bosses aren't quite as easy, starting with the twins. They once again spawn naturally when I wasn't ready for the fight, so it starts off a bit slow. I try my hardest, but they're no joke, especially Greeny, whose fire attack is almost unavoidable, so I am soon killed. I can already tell that the twins are gonna be no walk in the park, unlike the pirates. In total, they only take around 10 minutes to defeat, except for the Flying Dutchman. Killing it takes forever, so with my trap running in the background, I eat lunch, take a shower, journey to Mount Doom to destroy the One Ring, play some Subway Surfers, take another shower, and hey, would you look at that? Oh, and take a look at this too. Hey, and this. My attempt at victory proves pointless, other than the fact I realized Skeletron tends to hover a bit higher than 
than I expected. So for my next attempt, I disconnect the BS's below where I usually stand, and in that layer, summon Prime. The damage is a lot better, but the length of the hallway is my undoing. I know I can do it now though, so after moving the boulders up a row and replacing the now longer hallway's floor with asphalt, I summon Skeletron Prime once again. The entire fight is me simply running back and forth, taking basically no damage the entire time. I, my trap really, takes out the arms, and soon enough, Skeletron Prime himself is defeated. I'm gonna be honest, this was one of the most boring fights of the challenge. My confidence boosted by the W, I once again play my hand at taking on a Wyvern. One spawns, and after bringing it down to the arena, I am finally proved victorious when it's defeated. Rewarding me with Souls of Flight, I can use to fill up one of my inventory slots while I buy a jetpack from the Steampunker. I summon the twins the next night, and manage to get both Red and Greeny into their second phases. But honestly, what am I supposed to do here? I die with the pair at 23,000 health. I try the fight again, but it's the exact same story. Greeny's flame traps are simply way too powerful and nearly unavoidable. Or are they? To solve the twins' problem, I do a few things. One, I kill the destroyer again for hallowed bars. Two, I forge a full set of hallowed armor for the incredible set bonus it provides. Three, I come up with an absolutely genius plan to completely and utterly remove any danger the twins could possibly pose. The idea is to place a bunch of walls in my tunnel, hooking them up to actuators connected to nearby pressure plates. That way, as I run through the hall, there will always be a barrier in front of me and behind me, except for the split second I pass through it. Four, I at long last craft the grand design. And five, I implement my plan at the arena and summon those wretched twins. Give me a mystery machine and call me Fred Jones because this trap is a masterpiece. Not once throughout the entire fight do I drop below half health. The walls simply do a fantastic job at keeping both of Greeny's flame attacks at bay. Feeling like a master trapper, red, then the twins is a whole are defeated, and the jungle grows restless. I forge the pickaxe axe, and into the jungle I go. I grab my first life fruit, mine a bunch of chlorophyte, and build a simple jungle surface trap for getting turtle shells. It's surprisingly effective, so it doesn't take long before I get all three. And a jungle key that's completely useless. I make a full set of turtle armor, and realize its set bonus has a thorns effect. I really wish this wasn't the case, but there's just no way I'm gonna be not using the armor. I need all the defense I can get. Still ignoring the existence of the queen slime, Plantera is up next. I mine out a positively massive area in the underground jungle and add layers every few blocks, making sure to leave an outer ring for me to run around in. I line the layers with BS's and wire it all up, which practically burns my retinas to a crisp, but it completes the trap nonetheless. I think I still can't really see anything. It's a pretty basic design, but should get the job done. I regretfully break Plantera's bulb and she awakens. Almost the entire fight is me just running in rectangles, keeping her inside the trap. She falls below half health, which drastically increases her speed. This causes me to occasionally run into one of her claws, but they don't do nearly enough damage to take me out. So the Magnificent Plantera is defeated, dropping the Temple Key, and changing the dungeon from being hell to being something worse? And I unfortunately want Master Ninja Gear and a Paladin Shield, so I am forced into its depths. Yeah, I die basically the second I enter and give up for the time being. Instead, I unlock the Ancient Jungle Temple and make my way through its cavernous halls, past all the traps not yet mine, and into the Golem's Chamber. I mark all the pressure plates because before the Golem has been killed, there is no way to see, add, or remove wiring inside the temple, putting a hard limit on how many traps I can use. And this is it. I know it doesn't look like much, but it really isn't much. And this is what I plan on fighting the master mode golem with? Oh boy. Extremely worried this is where I find out this challenge is impossible, I summon the golem, with all of the traps off. I shamefully turn them all on mid-fight, and the damage is subpar to say the least. I press on, but flying snakes start spawning, sealing my doom. I lower my safety box so enemies can't spawn during the fight and give it another go. I do such little damage that after a full 90 seconds, I've only dealt 6,000 damage, meaning I would have to survive nearly 20 minutes to kill him with the current trap, which is technically possible, but that's also assuming I can maintain a constant flow of damage the entire time. Unsurprisingly, I don't pull it off and am defeated. So what now? Because I'm 100% confident I don't have the skill nor the means necessary to survive for that long, and there is literally no way to increase my damage a significant amount, meaning that my worst fears have come true, as the challenge I've poured does of hours into has come to an early end. So to answer the question posed in the title of this video, no, I can't.
At least not how I'm currently doing it, because there's still one more thing I can try. One last shot at success, one final option. I set myself in the underground hello farm and wait until the potential savior of this video is dropped by a chaos elemental. The Rod of Discord, which is apparently three times rarer than hallowed keys. I return to the golem's chamber and with one click of a button, reveal my plan. While I can't place wire inside the temple, there's nothing stopping me from placing wire outside the temple and fighting the golem there. So I dig three massive hallways, fill them with BS's, and switch them on. This is incredibly janky, but I can't have them above me, so to the side it is. I summon the golem, teleport into my arena, and watch as the golem swiftly follows. The damage is nearly three times as fast, and I have way more space to maneuver. I destroy his first to then second hand, but his lasers and fire eventually do me in. Yet my plan was working. In preparation for my next attempt, I add a water-filled hole in the ceiling using bubble blocks. Don't worry, I'll explain that later. For now, I decide to just commit, built a tiny home next to the dungeon, set my spawn, and get to grinding. This was genuinely the worst hour and a half I have ever experienced playing a video game. And here is why. You just saw me die 50 times. 50 times. In 90 minutes, I died 50 times. And not only that, I didn't manage to get a single item I wanted. In fact, I wasn't even able to kill a single Bonely or Paladin throughout the entire affair. Not even one. The longest I ever survived between deaths was literally only four minutes. I hate the dungeon so freaking much. Defeated and permanently scarred, I abandon the hunt. And with nothing left to do, I summon the golem again. The water is a game changer. It slows down the fireballs just enough to give me time to dodge. That combined with the unquenchable fireball of rage I got from the dungeon fiasco makes me beyond powerful. It makes me unkillable. It makes me a god. And the once nearly run ending golem is humbled beyond repair when I, the lord of traps, defeat him. His treasure bag doesn't contain the pixel I need to gather the jungle traps, but it matters not. I summon the golem once more, and once more, the wretched beast is defeated. And fearing the prospect of facing my might yet again, he provides me with the pixel. Okay, in all honesty, both fights were super long and intense. I didn't realize it during, but I guess I was holding my breath a lot because I gave myself a serious headache afterwards from focusing so hard. But with the mighty Pixar finally in my hands, I traveled through the temple grabbing every trap in sight earning me a total of 81 spiky ball, 30 spear, 11 flame, and 12 super dart traps, which are the final set of weapons I will get for the rest of the challenge. I craft a full set of beetle armor and wings, meaning I have officially reached maximum strength. Yet the journey is far from over. All but two progression bosses now defeated, it's finally time to face the Queen Slime. I build a big old box, add a plethora of the new temple traps, and summon the Queen. The trap works pretty well until I run into the same problem I did with the King Slime. One of her minions spawns in my hallway, completely screwing me over. I die, but for whatever reason, the Queen just doesn't despawn. So I rush back to the arena to pick up where I left off. She enters phase two, and being the girl boss she is, decides to not fly around like normal, but instead stays inside my hallway where I am efficiently defeated. I have literally no chance of dodging her second phase, and there's no way I could think of to keep her inside the trap. Gosh dang it, this was supposed to be an easy boss. I have no idea what to do about her second phase, so I tackle the minion problem first. I add actuators to the hallway floor and place a lever every few blocks. I summon her again and put my plan into action. Anytime a slime finds its way in my way, I simply flick a lever for a second and goodbye slimes. The queen drops low half health, so I try just running back and forth to minimize how often she can hit me. I as well as give my damage reducing beetles a chance to regroup. Yet my health slowly fades until the queen slime at a mere 4000 health proves victorious. Thankfully, I already know the solution. I add my heart statues and summon her again. Phase 1 is free, and with the extra health from the statues, so is Phase 2. And the gelatinous queen herself is defeated. But something about the fights just felt off. I just can't quite place my finger on it. I head to the ocean and start on a trap for the Duke Fishron. A few demon eye make me hate all of existence. I add in the jungle traps, and wow, that is menacing. Fully prepared for this fight to suck, I cast my line, and the Duke Fishron awakens. The trap is useless. 
The Duke loves to stay perfectly in line with my blocks while dashing, so it's really only taking damage for around a fourth of the time. But it's more than that, and I realized what I couldn't identify after the Queen Slime fights. Spiky Ball, Spear, Flame, and Super Dart Traps are all completely and utterly worthless. And always have been. Even in my first Traps Only video. The difficulty didn't only spike near the end because the bosses were getting harder, they spiked because I started using primarily the jungle traps. It's also clear now. After three minutes of battle and my entire world's view being thrown into question, I simply give up and am killed. In the three minutes I lasted, I only did around 13,000 damage, which is abysmally low, so I once again returned to using the goat. I also shimmer a gold worm, apple, life fruit, and heart crystal for a gummy worm, ambrosia, aegis fruit, and a vital crystal. I use all of them except the vital crystal because it turns out I did that way early on, and ready for a rematch, teleport to the... Note to self, inside an incredibly deadly trap is probably not the most ideal location for a pylon. I survive the trap this time and summon the Duke. Even with the boulders, my damage is terrible thanks to the Duke still being invincible most of the time. I do manage to get him into a second phase, but not for long. So outcome the teleporters. I fish up the Duke and only use the teleporters when I really need to, namely his entire second and third phases. Unfortunately, I'm a tad bit too slow twice in a row, so don't live to see it tomorrow. I summon him yet again and this time pay proper attention. It takes a while and is very annoying, but the Duke Fishron is defeated. I take the trap down, which keep in mind I have to do every single time, and get right to making the trap for the Empress of Light, which absolutely dwarfs every single trap so far in sheer size, featuring boulders as the only weapon and having a state-of-the-art disappearing floor. I'm intimately aware of how Empress fights work, so I knew I needed more room to maneuver than with the other bosses. By using enough actuators and levers to empty my wallet, I can have the advantages of using platforms for vertical wiggle room while maintaining the massive speed boost provided by asphalt. I catch a lace wing and summon the Empress of Light. She flies a lot higher than I expected, so my damage isn't nearly as good as it could be, but I find a decent movement pattern to dodge her first phase attacks in no time thanks to the double floors. Yet day soon arrives, enraging the Empress. I somehow survive a full minute of non-stop insta-kill attacks before she drops below half health and I am killed. I add another three layers of BSs to keep her taking as much damage as possible at all times. The wiring is quite time consuming, but well worth the effort. I squish another lace wing and she awakens. After only a minute, she's already lost 12,000 health, which is way better than before. And only a few minutes later, she enters phase 2, where strange things start to happen. I'm very confused by what I'm seeing for a second until I realize what's really going on. The trap is so immensely long and has so many boulder statues that I keep hitting the projectile limit. For those confused, the game has a hard limit of 1,001 projectiles being able to exist at any given time. And since I've reached that with boulders, there's not enough room for the Empress's attacks to work properly. The duel continues, but her second phase attacks are really throwing me for a loop on how to properly evade them. My heart slowly decay until they drop too low and I am killed. Even if I had survived however, I was not on track to take her out before the day arrived. Now before I go for the classic moon dial trick, I make a fishing pond in the desert and resort to a different strategy I used in my last traps only video, luck potions. I cast my line looking for crates, but more importantly, oysters. Each oyster can be opened and has a chance to drop a pearl which can be used to make the aforementioned luck potions. And increased luck means increased damage. Presumably. I fish for around a half hour for a total of 65 oysters, and from those 65 oysters I get 13 white, 2 black, and 3 pink. An insane haul considering pink pearls only have a 1 in 75 drop chance, and I got 3 from 65. Maybe I don't even need luck potions because that already seems pretty lucky to me. I shimmer one of the pinks into a galaxy pearl which gives me a permanent luck bonus, then continue to never use the other two out of fear of wasting such a rare item. I do make a lesser luck potion however and begin the fight anew, then a uh, old as I again lose. I'm fighting her in a tiny hallway, okay? I add a third level to the arena and finally make it through the entire night where I am of course killed, with the Empress still flaunting her 13,000 health. Deeming luck not enough, I try not only using a regular luck potion, but a wrath potion as well. I have absolutely no clue if either of them are doing a thing, but I finally find a decent pattern I can follow to survive. I get her all the way down to 9,000 health after surviving 30 seconds of day. So close, just not close enough so Moondial it is. I fish for a while until the enchanted sundial is mine. I shimmer it into the enchanted Moondial and place it at the arena. By using the Moondial during the Empress fight, I can fast forward through day until it's once again safe to get hit. Ready for what feels like attempt 48, I switch on all the timers and...
I am an idiot. Maybe, just maybe, between two obviously wired together heart statues is not a great place to put a wire activated device that takes 7 in game days to recharge. I sleep the 33 minutes it takes the moon dial to reset and summon the Empress. I do a decent chunk of her health and before she enters her far more deadly phase 2, I hit the moon dial. My timing is almost perfect. I really only have to dodge 3 of her attacks during the day before it's night again and she uses her by far deadliest phase 1 attack. The rest of the fight is a complete breeze now that I've gotten her pattern down and the Empress of Light is defeated. The Lunatic Cultist is the next boss, but once they're defeated, there's no stopping the inevitable. So call me Fred Jones and make me part of the gang, because things are about to get trappy. Wait, didn't I already make that joke? First things first, I take down the Skeletron Arena, borrow a few boulders from the Empress Trap, and repurpose them to make a much smaller and much more boring trap for taking on the Cultist. But now for the final and by far most complicated trap of the entire challenge, which needs to be built to take on the godlike entity who has made me fearful challenge failure from the beginning. And I'm not not just saying that to sound dramatic. The reason this arena needs to be much more complex than anything I've built so far is that the Great Leviathan has not one, not two, but four separate health bars. So I need to not only be hitting his top eye, 16 to 22 blocks above me, but his hands, 18 to 48 blocks to my sides, and his core, 4 to 12 blocks below me. This is a massive problem, and I mean massive. Every boss up at this point has had exclusively one area I need to be damaging during the fight. Like with the Eater, sure it split into multiple sections, but it was always underneath me I needed to be attacking, giving me plenty of space above it to move around. Or like with Skeletron Prime, who stayed above me except while spinning, but I didn't have to be hitting Skeletron while he spun. With Skeletron being mostly above me, I had all the horizontal room I could possibly ask for to dodge and evade, but not this time. To wrap up this little rant I'm on, my trap needs to be dropping boulders on my 12, 3, 6, and 9, leaving nowhere for me to run and evade the most powerful boss in the entire game. And that, friends, is just the tip of the iceberg. I haven't even mentioned his 277,000 health, the fact he can heal back thousands every few seconds, and that the only weapon I'll be using can be gotten before defeating even a single boss. And if that's not a challenge, I don't know what is. My greatest trap now complete, allow me to explain how it works. I plan on doing this fight in three main stages. Using boulders at the end of the arena and actuated layers, the head is going to be the first to go. I flick a lever, the blocks under the BSs turn off, as two walls in my hallway turn on to keep me safe from boulders now in my tunnel. This is to take out the hands. Assuming all goes well up to this point, I hit another lever, removing my chamber walls, as well as both the floor and ceiling at the far ends of my hallway, increasing the amount of boulders crossing his heart, hopefully killing that brute and freeing me from this insane challenge. In total, the trap took a full two hours to plan, build, and wire. Things got a bit messy and complicated near the end, but it's eventually complete. I buy an ice rod from the wizard, you'll see why in a minute, and determined to get what I died in vain for so long ago, return once more to the dungeon. I add spiky balls to the trap since they're pretty good at crowd control, occasionally use dungeon spirits as an immunity shield, and countless deaths later pick up a tabby and a black belt. Not a single paladin spawned for whatever reason, so no shield, but I'll take Master Ninja Gear any day. I also do a quick biome shift at the underground farm to grab a frozen turtle shell for that extra touch of survivability. But with all that out of the way, I set up two flame traps and kill the lunatic devotees, summoning the lunatic cultist. Almost all of their attacks get blocked by the trap itself, so I have pretty much nothing to worry about other than fantastic well dragons. With no way of attacking a particular cultist, every single time they summon shadow cultists, a phantasmal dragon spawns. My trap makes quick work of them, but I do take a decent bit of damage every time. The lunatic's second phase is a tiny bit more deadly, but I still have no issues surviving, and the lunatic cultist is defeated, beginning the unstoppable chain of events that will domino into either the most magnificent successes or the most brutal of failures. I go for the stardust pillar first. Using my ice rod, I can place a block mid-air to start building a trap to kill enemies in the pillar. I die a few times, so start working a bit higher up where nothing can spawn. I build a basic box trap, get a star cell to spawn, and just watch. My trap kills the cell, it multiplies, my trap kills the multiples, they multiply. The final enemy is killed, followed by the pillar itself. One down, three to go. I grab the remnants, take down the trap, and begin the solar pillar. I start building another skybox, but corites don't need blocks to spawn on, so I die many a time before just giving up and moving to a ground-based trap. Because of corites, 
Giants are going to be spawning no matter where I am, I might as well be killing as many enemies as possible. I only die one more time, and the Solar Pillar is destroyed. Two down, two to go. I grab the remnants, take down the trap, and begin the Nebula Pillar. Thankfully, none of the enemies can spawn mid-air, so I'm able to set up the trap carefree. But the second things can spawn, all hell breaks loose. I think the dungeon might have some competition for the worst thing to ever exist to war. Nebula floaters can go through blocks, shoot lasers, and teleport? Seriously, Relogic, how is that at all balanced? They're abysmally annoying, and in the 50 minutes it takes me to take down this pillar, yep, you heard that right, 50 minutes for this pillar, I die 32 times, 90% of which were caused by floaters, so here's a quick haiku I wrote to commemorate the disgust I feel towards these monsters. Nebula floater, you ruined my lovely day, step on a Lego. The last enemy is eventually killed, swiftly followed by the pillar's destruction. Three down, one to go. I grab the remnants, take down the trap, and give it the finger one last time. Oh, uh, I mean, and begin the vortex pillar. It's a decently standard event overall, other than Richard. Richard, this is the viewer. Viewer, this is Richard. It's also a bit unusual in the fact that it takes over an hour to defeat. The enemies were painfully slow to kill for some reason, so I was forced to just sit there, anxiety slowly building, waiting for the final pillar to fall. The last enemy I need to kill is killed, and soon after, the one thing keeping the Great Calamity at bay is destroyed as well. Impending doom approaches, and the earth itself begins to quake in anticipation for the one true master of Terraria to fall upon it. I pick up the final fragments, teleport to the arena, switch the timers to active, and wait. Heart pounding in my chest for my greatest foe, mightiest opponent, and doom incarnate, Moonlord. The Moon Lord awakens, beginning the duel. This should be the easiest part of the fight as there aren't any true eyes of Cthulhu and I have the entire hallway to move around in. I do accidentally grow out into the wrong area, but once corrected, it's smooth sailing. I find a pretty good pattern to dodge his attacks, but in the 90 seconds we've been fighting, the Moon Lord has only taken 3000 damage. So I turn to plan B. I flip a switch, changing the arena into stage 2. The damage I do naturally doubles, but being confined to such a tiny area means I have zero time to react, and nowhere to go go even if I could, so I am defeated only 5% of the way through the Moon Lord's health. A devastating first attempt, to say the least. Instead of drastically changing the entire arena and potentially screwing it up, I decide to tackle one problem at a time, starting with the Moon Lord's ability to heal back thousands of health every few seconds, which almost completely negates any damage I do. So I add ball traps to the area right above me in hopes they'll do enough damage to at least take out the majority of the leech clots before they can heal the Moon Lord. I craft a celestial sigil and summon him to battle. My plan is a complete failure. The Leech Clots still have more than enough health when they reach the Moon Lord's mouth. So that's a bust, but I don't want to just throw this attempt out the window, so I keep fighting. And fighting. And fighting. My hopes of beating this challenge slipping further and further away. Until after nearly 45 minutes of battle, I have to pause the game mid-fight out of pure exhaustion. After 43 minutes, I have done exactly 48,089 damage. My spirits at this point were at an all-time low. I mean, surviving against the Moon Lord long enough to defeat him in a regular regular playthrough is hard enough, and here I am having survived 40 minutes while trapped in a 5 block tall tunnel. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but I feel like that's already seriously impressive. But after it all, I'm only 20% of the way done. I take a minute to stretch, then resume the impossible. I know the strategy like the back of my hand at this point, so I don't have to worry about actually surviving. And after an hour and 20 minutes, the Moon Lord's first eye is finally destroyed. I once again hit the lever and die within 30 seconds. I spent 80 minutes just to die in seconds of switching to phase 2, and it broke me. I know that sounds exaggerated, so let's do a little experiment. I'm gonna show you a 15 second clip from the fight. I want you to try and watch the entire thing without losing focus whatsoever. Whether or not you felt super bored watching that, just imagine putting that on repeat and watching it another 319 times. This one 80 minute period took and replaced all my confidence with sheer dread. But I can't quit before I've tried everything I can, so I add honey, take down the spike traps, and call down the Moon Lord again. I start the trap in hands mode this time to see if survival is even possible. It very much is not. 
so I just wing doing more trap modifications. Namely, I add back the ball traps, but this time place them at top eye level, as well as some below my hallway to see if they can even do a little bit of passive damage to the hands. And lastly, I hook up two teleporters on the left side of the arena I can use during stage 2. The wiring gets completely unhinged, but it works. I craft the last sigil I can before having to redo the lunatic cultist and pillars, and summon the almighty moon lord. It doesn't take very long before I notice that the spiky ball traps aimed at the head are actually decreasing how much damage I do, so I disconnect them and continue. This actually does take me a while to notice, but the bottom spiky balls are having the exact opposite effect as the others. They unsurprisingly don't do much damage by themselves, but what they lack in raw power, they make up for in not losing damage. I never directly see it happen, but every once in a while when the Moon Lord heals, a thousand health that would normally go towards healing its top eye is instead directed to the left hand, allowing me to destroy the top eye in less than an hour. Barely, but it still counts. I rush to the center and change the trap into core mode. If the spiky balls were able to hit the hands, maybe the boulders could too, or they could be just out of reach. Using just the balls on the hands does not cut it damage-wise by a long shot. They're easily able to heal back up to full, so I try the last thing that could save me from the torment that is the celestial pillars. I switch into hands mode and get to teleporting. The teleporters are way too close together, so the Moon Lord's attacks are able to consistently hit me no matter where they're fired from. The closeness also means that his tongue can attach to me mid-teleport, completely nullifying the entire reason for using teleporters at all. I survive for a few minutes, tell spirit broken, I am killed. I know I said my second attempt is what broke me, but the prospect of not only having to face the Moon Lord again, but the Cultist and Pillars too was simply more than I could take. This entire chapter so far took place in a single day for me. I was exhausted, and I'll be honest, was genuinely considering accepting defeat. But I didn't. The Moon Lord will fall, and I am gonna cause it. I summon the Cultist, actually hit the right one for once, and they are again defeated. The Vortex Pillar goes a lot quicker this time thanks to me repurposing the jungle farm. The nebula pillar still drains my will to live, but a smidge less than before once I set my spawn point in the trap, letting me just AFK my way through the whole thing. Finally, the stardust pillar is a cakewalk. All but one pillar destroyed, it's time for your favorite part of the video again, trap adjusting. I kick off the process by adding a row of blocks right below my hallway so the boulders can be constantly hitting the Moon Lord's hands instead of the lousy spiky balls. I try wiring its actuators into the system, but I mean, just look at this mess. I've done so many last minute adjustments, there's absolutely no way to keep track of what is what. So I tear it all down and just start over from scratch. I redo everything, making sure to keep it organized and easy to understand. I add lots more boulders, actuators, and overall strategy. So here's a rundown on how the new and improved trap works. Stage 1 targets the head and hands. Once the head is destroyed, I go to the left and switch the trap into hands mode. Once they're also destroyed, I flick another lever, removing the hand boulder's floor for better core coverage. Once again ready to take on the Moon Lord, I enter the solar pillar, set up my upper and lower traps, and wait. I don't die a single time and the final lunar enemy is defeated, followed by the last of the pillars. Impending doom approaches, so I frantically grab the solar fragments, pile onto the arena, equip the proper accessories, and the Moon Lord away awakens, forcing into my mind that constant fear of defeat. Stage 1 is about the head, but in a wild turn of events, both hands are taken out first. This was not part of the plan and the now two true eyes of Cthulhu keep me at a consistently lower health than before. Their out-of-sync attacks completely ruin the pattern I was using, keeping me on my toes the entire time. Yet in a record-setting 30 minutes since the Moon Lord's arrival, the final eye is destroyed, exposing the single obstacle between me and glory. I'm in unfamiliar territory now, so just keep going with my current routine to see how it works. Good news, I don't die. Bad news, my boulders are far outpaced by the Moon Lord's now rapid healing, placing me and the Lunar God himself in a stalemate. Neither stronger or weaker than the other. A perfect balance between good and evil. So, I'm forced to make a change. I lock myself into the teleporters and the tide begins to shift. The teleporters are now too far apart so the Moon Lord simply teleports with me, keeping me in a never-ending barrage of attacks and susceptible to his lifesteal. I die with the Moon Lord at 94,000 health. Yet more determined than ever, I craft another sigil, move the teleporters into hopefully more suitable locations, and completely remove stage 2 since the only thing it's really adding is complexity. Feeling ready to summon him once more, I get into my hallway and realize one of the torches is off. In an attempt to replace it with an active one, I summon the Moon Lord completely by accident. He awakens, but not being ready at all, I'm forced to tank the first few seconds of attacks in order to actually turn the trap on. Quick tip, trying to tank damage in master mode, especially damage coming from the Moon 
the Lord is never a good idea, and that point is proven when I am soon defeated. That really sucks. I have a very limited amount of Lunar Fragments, and I just wasted 48 of them. I craft the second to last sigil I can, and on purpose this time, summon the Moon Lord. He arrives, and I go into autopilot, repeating the exact same pattern I've done hundreds of times by now. His first, then second hands are destroyed, putting me into the improvisation part of the fight. Yet fueled by adrenaline, I survive to see the Moon Lord's core once again. To keep away from his tongue, I start teleporting back and forth. And finally, it works! The tide once again begins to shift, but this time, it's in my favor. I slowly start gaining ground, and the momentum doesn't stop building. It's a grueling fight for survival, but for the first time since joining this world, I begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So how about we finish this thing once and for all? After facing countless challenges, dozens of failures, and the greatest of victories, the Moon Lord and the entirety of Terraria are at long last defeated using nothing but traps. Because after all, this was Terraria Master Mode Traps Only. The credits roll, freeing me from the traps-only purgatory I've been trapped in for the last 88 hours. This was simultaneously the funnest challenge I've done, but also the worst challenge I've done. There were so many points I thought I had reached the end of the road, but just managed to pull through. And for those curious, I died exactly 444 times, meaning I spent a whopping 111 minutes or 1.85 hours looking at the death screen. So please, if you enjoyed the video, it would mean the world to me if you subscribed. Even if it's out of pity, it seriously helps me out. Out. But anyways, this video is already freaky long, so thank you so so much for watching, let me know what you'd like to see me do in the future, have a fantastic spring, summer, fall, or winter, and see ya!